All right, so this is the March 2022, I believe, international edition test. So I try to stay from the international, stray away from it sometimes, but it should be the same, right? So if you want to find these, mathlab.online slash SAT, the last link over there on the right, that's where you got to go. I got a whole bunch of SAT material in there. And these are all the real tests, allegedly. So let's look at how we're going to do this one. So I would look at the y-intercept first. I mean, this is a very easy question. They always start, like, usually they start off with easy questions. So I would just continue this pattern. You look that it's going down 10 every time, which means that when we get to x equals zero, it should be four. So now that the slope is 10, right? Because just continuing with the x patterns, we go down by five, we go down by 10. So we know the x-intercept is four. So, and it's positive four. And that actually gets us the answer, right? Two x plus four. And then, yeah, the slope is definitely two. You could also plug in numbers, you, like plug in 10, you get 24. Is that the only one that does that? Yeah, it is. So there you go. Yeah, first problem, pretty easy. Second problem looks a little harder because it's exponential. Uh, the graph of the function is there for what value of f of x equal to zero. So see how they're saying when is the y value equal to zero? What x value makes the y value equal to zero? And it does look like four. f of four is equal to zero. Wow. They're starting off really easy. They're so kind. Add 6 to both sides. 56. Don't let the big numbers scare you. The function g is defined as that. Oh my goodness. What is the value of g of x when x equals 1? I thought the international ones were harder. Maybe the international ones are easier. So we're making x equals 1. We're trying to find g of 1. You make x equal to 1. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. Holy moly. Okay. The graph shows that, in the, according to the graph, how many years does it take for the value of an investment to double? So just based on the way they're asking, it must be consistent. So let's just look at, it went from 100 to 200. That's doubling. How long did it take? What is that? 14 years? Yeah, more than 10, that's for sure. So D. Okay. Based on the graph, what was the price of 100 pounds of flour? So look, we're not trying to go up to 100. You don't have to write an equation or anything. You just got to say, oh, no, this is one of those. This is one of those. So this is where you go, what is this? In 1845, a family had $18 to play Oregon Trail. The graph shows the possible combinations. This is the one, this is my nemesis, is they didn't show any of these in their example problems, but they put them on here a lot. So here, you look at the extremes. They point out that if you buy no bacon, you can buy 900 pounds of flour for $18. So what we want is dollars. We want what is the price of $100 per flour. We want dollars per flour, dollars per 100 pounds of flour. So we're going to say that $18 gets us 9 pounds of flour. So each 100 pounds of flour is 2. So see how the 100s don't matter because the graph is just in 100s? And so that's always the technique. You look at one of these two points. That's really the only points you care about. That shows you how much each one costs. Like if this was like at a clean two or something, I guess it's at a clean like 33 or 36. Yeah, see, that's just not a clean number. That's why it's harder. If this was a clean two, then that would tell you that like bacon was 18 divided by two, nine dollars per pound per hundred pound. Wow, they're buying in bulk, I guess because they're going across the country. All right, next. The given equation relates to distinct positive real numbers, Q, R, S, and T. Which equation correctly expresses... Oh, right, this is one of those you don't need to read them. You just look at the answer choices. We're solving for T. So we need to cancel out that S. So you might say like the S -th root or something like that. But also remember that taking the S -th root is multiplying or raising both sides to the 1 over s. So that's canceling this out. That's getting us just plain t on this side. And then here, when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply them. So q times r, yeah, q times 1 over s is q over s. That's a thick marker. So what do we want? r to the q over s, a. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. 8. Which polynomial is that? Oh, so they just want us to FOIL. So we'll go bit by bit. So we're looking for a 12x to the fifth. So not that, not that, not that. So it's C. You get it right off the bat. 
is you're still going to have a 12x to the fifth. Make sure real quick there's no other 12x to the fifth. That's the only x to the fifth in the entire thing. And you don't multiply those exponents, you add the exponents. They're making me doubt myself. But no, that's definitely right. Can we also reconfirm it some more? Well, not really, because it's just between C and D. Those are the same. But no, it's definitely x to the fifth. That's that's all you need. x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. Okay. What is the graph of this? So they're giving it to us in vertex form. So we know that it's negative 2, and that's a negative, right? Yeah. So it's opposite sign on the first one, same sign on the last one. That's because normally we kind of look at it like this, and then it's opposite sign on both. But in this case, it's on the other side. So it's the same sign. So the vertex is negative 2, 4. What does that do for us? Oh, this is kind of hard to read. Um, this is 0, 0, though. Yeah, so that's not negative 2, negative 4. That's negative 2, 0. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's that. And that's all we need. We just needed the vertex, yeah. Probably plug in values, too. Like what? That goes through 0, 0. Oh, that goes through 0, 0. That makes sense. It should go through 0, 0. So the first one doesn't do that. That one doesn't do that. That one does it. But then when we plug in 2, what should we get? When we plug in 2, we should get 16 minus 4. We should get 12. We should get a big number, which is what D does. Okay. It's nice to have like multiple ways to confirm that you got your answer right. Okay, next. Um, if the function is graphed, what is an x-intercept? So there's a lot of x-intercepts, right? This is where you go, how do you find an x-intercept? You set the whole function equal to 0. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So all of those x values would be the correct answer. They have negative 3. Okay. Um, the system has no solution. Ooh, we had one of these last time. Which of the other ones could be the second equation? So no solution. So when they're writing it like this, if it's got no solution, we know they need to be the same slope. So we know it needs to have a slope of 3. C and D have a slope of 4. If they have different slopes, then they intersect once. So, and then look at B. B, if you distributed, you'd get 3x plus 12. You'd get the exact same equation. And so that means it has infinite solutions. This basically, we want the same slope, but different y-intercepts, is how I like to think about it. If we have the same slope and the same y-intercept, then it's just the same line. So we want same slope, different y-intercept for no solution. A. Whoa! All right, this would scare a lot of people, especially because this is on the no calculator section. But it's the one main property that you have to know. You have to know that the sine, I always forget, that x minus 90 or 9 is minus x. Usually it doesn't really matter. Sine of 90 minus x is equal to the cosine of x. So right here, we have the cosine of 90 minus 40. So that's equal to the cosine of 40 yeah that's like one of the very few trig properties that they do on here that the co functions which you don't do in class very often but you or at least not in my experience but you do do on the SAT significantly so you know that if these two add up to 40 or add up to 90 40 and 50 then the sine and the cosine are going to be the same all right Going into another type of question they didn't have a lot of on their example ones. So for these triangles, RS correspond to KL, respectively, RS is 3 times KL. Got it. Which of the following statements is true? The measure of angle R is 45. Oh, how could we know that? ST is 60. That one makes a lot more sense. So let's draw this out. So triangle... KLM, which is shown, and then is similar to triangle RST. So we go KLM, we should go RST. So this is 60, because RS is 3 times KL, so 3 times bigger. So that's 60. This is still 15 degrees. Oh, and that's what they're getting at. They're saying, do you multiply the angles by 3 as well? And no, absolutely, you do not. When you have similar triangles, the angles stay the same. So all that is true is number two, that it's 60. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Okay, what is next? Ooh, Zaya, sorry I missed you there. You didn't like what linear graph? It's one, I don't know. I haven't been watching you for a while. 
Um, anyway. So, let's go to the next one. Kiara uses her propane grill for an average of 11 hours each week. Her grill can run an average of 18 hours per 20-pound tank. Kiara would like to reduce her weekly expenditure on propane by $5. Assuming propane costs $16 per 20-pound tank, which equation can Kiara use to determine how many fewer hours she should use for her grill each week? Okay. I've done this problem before. Kiara would like to reduce her weekly expenditure on propane by $5. So I'm going to think dimensional analysis. I'm going to go... Right now, she's thinking about $5, and when I'm looking at propane, I'm looking at $16 per 20 pounds. $16 per 20 pounds. And that should equal H. Oh, no, because that's how many pounds she wants to use. And then we have to see uses her propane grill for an average of 11 hours per week. Her grill can run an average of 18 hours per 20 pound take so now we go for 20 pounds it's 18 hours and that should equal h so we might just have to move stuff around a little bit to get it to be where we want so the 20 pounds and the 20 pounds are just canceling it's 18 hours for 16 dollars so they want, well, they want a six by itself. What? No, that's the five. We want a five by itself, probably. Yeah, they're saying, see, right now we have five times 18 over 16 equals H. And they're thinking about it in terms of multiplying both sides by 16 over 18. to so cancel this out and move it to the other side. So five is equal to 16 over 18 H. For whatever reason. You don't ask why the SAT does what they do. You just you just go with them. So that one should be D. Next, we got one of their favorites. They always throw in him one with like roots and fractional exponents. Two over five. Wow. So, I mean, what? It looks like we got this. So remember that we could separate this if we wanted to, which it looks like that's probably what they're doing here to the squared. All of that to the one-fifth. So now we can just square that thing. So if we square that thing, what does that end up as? We have the first thing squared. So you got to square the 2, square the square root of x. And then the 2 times the first thing times the last thing. So 2 times 2 is 4. First thing times last thing, root x, y. And then plus the last thing squared. Square root of y squared, just y. All of that raised to the fifth. And I think that's an answer choice. That's C. Yeah. So they don't always ask you to go all the way. They just ask you to do a little bit. And you know, we did a little bit. All right. Free response section. Absolute value. What is the positive solution to the given equation? So we have two absolute values. You're not usually used to that. But look how we have two of that plus three of the same thing. So that really just means we have five of that thing. If those were different, it would end up being a lot harder. But they're the same. So should be fine. And now before we even deal with the absolute value, we can... Divide by 5. And then, I'll write it out. How do we do this? We separate it. We got positive 5. We got negative 5. We solve both of those equations. So we get x equals 1. And we get x equals 9. What is the positive solution? Did I not just find that there's two positive solutions? one or nine they would normally word that differently if it was that wasn't the case let's plug this in so oh yeah no 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 wait huh who you plug in nine you get five you plug in one four minus this it's not one it's oh it's negative one it's negative one okay it's negative one and nine so then the answer is nine okay okay Function defined by negative 2x plus 8. The x-intercept is x comma 0. What is the value of x? So how do you find an x-intercept? They tell you right here. You make y equal to 0. You go 0 equals negative 2x plus 8. And you go that x equals 4. And that's just the answer. We have a system. 
All right, so they want us to solve for y, but it's going to be a lot easier to solve for x. So I'll just solve for x first. So I multiply by a negative, so now I can simply add them together. So positive 4 minus 3 is 1. So x is 1 third. That's not that bad. We'll just plug that into the original top equation. 6 times a third, that's why it's not bad, is 2 minus y is negative 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. y equals 6. And I do believe that should be the answer. Let's plug that into the second equation. Make sure it works for that too. So 9 times a third is 3 minus 6 is indeed negative 3. So that works for both equations. So pretty confident that that's right. All right, there's about the quadratic equation here, as I'd say. One solution can be written like that. What is the value of n? So right, you just need the quadratic equation. So we go negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so look what they're getting at. n is the number inside the square root. So they're talking about 5. That was pretty simple. OK, the measure cosine of 40. Wow, that was a long time ago. But that's correct. Why didn't I see that? I thought I was looking at the chat up there pretty good. That was correct, I believe. We're going to check our answers after this section. Anyway, last problem. Time looking good. It only has been 16 minutes. The measure of angle A is 7 over 12 pi radians greater than the measure of angle B. Whoa. How much greater is the measure of angle A? Oh, in degrees. So we don't even have to think about comparisons. All we're trying to do is we're trying to switch this to degrees. So the way to do that is, again, dimensional analysis. So right now we're in radians, which means we want to cancel out the radians which means we're going to multiply by pi radians underneath, on top, 180 degrees. So maybe the hard part here is just the algebra or the arithmetic, but we just got to do, we just got to cancel. So I see the 6, so I'll go 6, I'll go 2, I'll go 30. Now the 2 is obvious, that's 15. 7 times 15, 70, 35, 105. That's just one of the special ones. I could have just known that for that anyway. But yeah, 105. 105 degrees. All right, and that should be it. Let me pause the recording.